Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Rev. And we are going around America's Great Loop aboard the Here's to Us. Yeah, welcome to this episode of What Yacht to Do, where we're going to go from uh, Beaufort, South Carolina, to an anchorage about 20 miles short of Charleston, South Carolina, where we intend to spend the holiday weekend. If you have never seen our channel before, we talk about going around the Great Loop. If that's something that you're interested in, you should subscribe and hit the bell. Yeah, so we have a number of critical areas we're going to go through today, uh, so I'm going to be sharing those with you as we move along up to our anchorage. Well, goodbye, Beaufort, South Carolina. <laughs> Had a lovely time there. It is a really nice uh, town, city. If you ever get a chance to visit, you should check it out. Yeah, it just was so hot when we were there. Oh, fact, my goodness. Uh, I forgot those, all uh, about that. The horses couldn't even come out. It was That's so hot. That's right. Well, it is the season. It is nearing 4th of July, and it was just really exciting to see how they had decorated the swing bridge right by the marina with the colors. Yeah, obviously we didn't need the swing bridge open. We're short enough we can get under it, but we did see a number of sailboats while we were docked there at Beaufort, and they opened it up for the sailboats, obviously, to get through. I am thankful that we're not a sailboat. Yeah. Oh, speaking, yeah, speaking of sailboats, of sailboats oh my goodness. there's one getting towed, yeah. Yeah, and he's pulling them pretty fast here. Let's see if he can get them up on plane. <laughs> <laughs> We did see this, several boats um, parked on a shoaling. We call shoaling, they call a beach. Yeah, so uh, those jets, obviously the vertical takeoff and landing capability, and I'm not sure, I've been retired from the Air Force too long now, and don't know what those jets are. I think they're F-35s, but somebody correct me, and I don't know what base they might have been coming from. So. Well, we heard it was a marine base, and their flying path is right over the marina yeah. in the town of Beaufort. Yeah. So we would like to know more about that. Um, so the base is back behind there, and then they had these homes, and um, I don't know if this is part of the base or not, but I just like the way they look. Their boathouse is there, and um, really nice neighborhood. It is a nice neighborhood. They look the same on both sides of the boat. I think South Carolina is a really neat state. So here's to us. We are going from Beaufort, South Carolina, and we're picked out an anchorage that is just 20 miles short of Charleston. It would be a really long day today if we went all the way to Charleston. And well, we're just up for an anchorage, and it looks like uh, great weather. It is a beautiful day. Why don't you pan around there, Rev? We are fighting a little bit of the current, but you can't always plan on the current. Because it does change as you're going through these areas with the different inlets. My main concern today is the tide. And we left right at the latest point we could leave, right at low tide at Buford, knowing that we're going to be going on a rising tide. And we have about five critical areas that I'll call them that Bob 423, and again, someday I'm going to meet this man and buy him a a round of drinks and whatever we'll uh, we'll talk about it but he has saved us a lot of work what I've done is I've printed off his sheet and today I have five areas and I've imported those routes I'm following his track here I've taken his track his actual track that he had a couple months ago and I've imported that into a route the boat is coupled to that 
and you can see we're like uh, right on course about uh, one foot. Uh, right now, uh, on my backup navigation is I'm running Navionics here, and you can see where we are, and what I have selected is the next critical area. Let's see if I can get this right here. The next critical area is up in this area here, and that is uh, actually Ashapoo Creek. And so when we go through there, we're going to be on a rising tide about about two hours or two and a half hours into the cycle. So that's what I planned was, okay, where are we going to be at high tide, and can I maximize the tidal swing with all these different areas that are going to be uh, somewhat critical. Uh, he indicates that Ashapu Kusa cutoff is 5.9 at mean low, low water, so which would be fine for our boat. Uh, you know, that is, uh, that's getting there, but we're going to have about two to three feet above that, so we should be good. But we'll go through there real slow. We'll just take it easy, and we'll see how it goes. So we'll talk to you as we're going through Ashapu Creek. The right here was uh, pretty much wide open right here, but at this part I'm getting ready for the next couple areas, trying to redo the calculations, looking at the route, because like I mentioned, there were five what I considered critical areas in here. I like these wide open spaces so we can turn up the speed. Yeah. Let's get on down. The, you know, yeah. we, that looks like we're going pretty fast. Yeah, I don't know how fast you were. We're up on plane here to I love move it. along a little bit. I like it. The water looks pretty brown. All right, just a little update as we are progressing from Beaufort, South Carolina to our anchorage, which will be about 20 miles short of uh, Charleston, and we'll be able to get in tomorrow on a good slack current into our uh, marina. That's the plan. So you always have to kind of think ahead of what's the next thing down the road. You can look here where we are right now. It's about mile marker 520 on the Intruck Coastal Waterway. And right there you see that that's about 1.6 miles per hour current pushing against us. That's what that orange arrow means. And if it gets stronger, it goes to red. And if it gets lighter, it goes to uh, yellow. Well, we could go faster in the here's to us, but here's, here's the, uh, the math on this is that the Ashapu Kusa cutoff, which is the next area of concern. And if Rev, if you can kind of go over here to my backup navigation is this area right here, which is really only about a couple miles away is it is on a rising tide and so it's charted at uh, 5.9 mean low water so let's just round it off to six feet and so we should have because I calculated that we should have about three feet uh, above that so we should have nine feet well that's nine feet of water from the surface of the water down. The here's to us needs about four and a half feet. So let's just call it five, okay? So that's five feet of water below the, the propellers. And my depth finder is two feet below the water. So what does that mean is, okay, if I have nine feet of water down there and I have two feet, the lowest I should really see is seven feet. So we're going to test that out as we go through, which is plenty of water to get us through uh, there. So we're going to go take it slow and uh, be very cautious. We've done some uh, readings here. Uh, we're now underway two hours into the trip. So getting ready for this next, uh, I guess, kind of critical phase of uh, the journey here to the anchorage. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, so at the skinniest part of the cut and the narrowest part of the cut, here comes a big old cruiser. Wouldn't you know it? Yeah, and he looks like he might be familiar with this local area here. So he is charging right down, and we are going to pass pretty close to each other. You think he seems more comfortable with the situation? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is He <laughs> probably uh, goes through this area a lot. 
and I don't recognize the flag or anything, but I'm sure he has local knowledge that everything is a-okay. <laughs> yeah, but I do remember the uh, depth beeping. It was shallow yeah, when you got a, over. we did get uh, a, a beep on the alarm. Look, depth, dolphin! But, yeah. All right, we made it through the Ashapu Kusa cutoff, and we did see somewhere around eight feet, and as you probably saw in the video, a boat came through just at the most narrow and skinniest part on there. We are now coming up uh, mile 511 on the Intracoastal Waterway, and that is, uh, looks like it's charted at 7.2 mean low water, and we're now approaching about four feet over that, so really we're going to see about 11 feet of water and maybe two feet under, so we should see nothing less than nine. So we're kind of just doing these mental calculations to kind of go from there. And if you would look here is, here's my backup navigation. You can see the, uh, the delta triangle there, the red delta. That's us, and we will be coming up and making a turn to the port side and just a small cut through there that they have dredged and that's how we're going to join the next part of the Intracoastal Waterway. You can see it up there, there is a red marker way out in the distance so we'll all leave that red marker to the port side. Coming up on another cut, and a lot of people ask, you know, what do we do in between these? Uh, you know, what do we do underway? And we pretty much just look at the scenery and go, wow. Just a while ago, Rev was watching a pelican and dived for fish, and I'm just kind of looking out and enjoying the scenery, kind of monitoring the systems, taking readings once in a while, but it is just so beautiful out here on the Great Loop. Coming up on Watts Cut, and this is the one I really planned around because it had the lowest mean low water reading, 5.8. But right now we're about five feet high, so let's 5.8, let's round that to six and let's add five, that's 11. And so two feet below that is our sensor. So the lowest we should really see in Watts Cut is going to be about nine, and, and all of our math has been working out. And a lot of people ask me, well, why don't you do an offset to put how low your depth sounders are? And you can do that in the Garmin. It's certainly able to do it. I would just rather know that, A, my depth sounders are about two feet below the water line, and that way I can do the math in my head. I don't have to figure out if I have an offset in there or not. So anyway, you could do it however you want. But uh, we're going to be coming up on that cut, and then we have one more before we anchor. Off course. We saw, we heard the birds first, and then I turned around and looked. Those birds were acting like we were a shrimp boat, throwing things, <laughs> uh, giving them little uh, tidbits of fish. But maybe our boat was just turning up fish, and they really liked um, staying there. The Kenley Washington Jr. Those parents really wanted him to be president, didn't they? Yeah, can't leave Washington. All right, let's see how she's going to do going through here. Yeah, because you, you want to go that way. Yeah.
you know, maps to do it here. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it either. Take it over. According to Bob 423, this is our route. And if you look at it, it looks like we're going to go right across land. But he has done a YouTube video on it and uh, says that, well, the maps are incorrect because they have dredged it. So this is kind of a little uh, faith thing here in Bob 423. We're going to slow it down just a little bit here. Uh, we're looking out there. We could kind of see where there is. Know, a point out that way but he says hey not to worry it's been dredged so I am glued to the depth finder and if it doesn't look good when we get up here visually uh, I'm gonna point off to the right so we'll just see how it goes and I do, do see uh, straight up ahead I see a red buoy out there I'm showing 14 feet right now, and we're coming up across where it looks like it would be green. So we're going into the green area where Bob said it is good, and uh, sure enough, I've got 15 feet of water. I don't hear any depth alarms at this point. So a little unnerving, but that is the track that he took, so we are trusting him. You could go the other route, it's a little bit longer, and there's nothing wrong with this route, it seems to me. Although, up straight ahead, I do see a little bit of green up there, if you can kind of pan out there the front window. So I'm keeping an eye on that, but that's further down the track, and I see a red buoy up there. The boat's making a slight course correction to the right. The lowest that we ever saw was 15 feet or so, I think, on there. Maybe 14.8 might have glanced at it one time. So, it works, and we're here to tell you about it. So, on my AIS up ahead, I saw a number of targets which told me there was something near the shore, and certainly was. There was a number of toes there, there was barges, a lot of activity in this area so it was Adam, interesting to see though one was anchored out in the center and then all that other uh, over on the side and here comes our shrimp boat oh yeah yeah kind of chugging along there doing his thing yeah getting us dinner <laughs> these dolphins right in front of us they're gone I think I got them. So here is our anchorage. We did a nice figure eight pattern to check out the depth, deploy the anchor, and then here comes the storm. We're so, definitely getting better at anchoring. But yeah, we did get some weather. And it was okay. okay.